Bonjour. Ciao. Hello, party people. Today is a meal prep day. I kind of feel like I have my life together. I printed out some recipes and I wrote down, I think everything we plan on making. I actually bought this notebook off of Amazon. Can you see it? Here, there's a good look. I want to say it was like $11. I do not recommend. I have no idea what I was thinking when I bought this, thinking, oh yeah, you know what, it may have been $8, and I was thinking, $8, that's a great deal. <laughs> what? It's a terrible deal. I will not link it below. Anyway, that's irrelevant. This is what I used to uh, write down all the meals I plan to make with you guys, but most importantly, this is a collab video. Yeah, it's a collab video. Exciting, right? It's totally dance worthy. I even got dressed in actual clothing today because we might have some new friends here, you guys. I'm collabing with Tiffany Beeston on this video. I know. What, Kim? I didn't even know you were her friend. I didn't either. It feels like I'm friends with Beyonce. I'll be surprised to learn if you guys don't already know about Tiffany, but if you don't, she's incredible. She's basically the queen bee of, you know, this mom niche on YouTube. She has four kids. She recently just had her fourth and she's in that like exhaustion phase of postpartum and she's still pumping out content and she's still giving us motivation. She's absolutely incredible. I'm pretty sure she was the mastermind behind the whole get it all done series. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty certain that she was the one who spearheaded that whole thing and now it's become this phenomenon on YouTube and for good reason. It's fantastic. It provides tons of motivation. You get so much done in a day and you share it with others and it's just all around motivating. And that's exactly what encompasses her and her channel. She shares real life. She shares a lot of food inspiration, a, a lot of cleaning motivation, but most importantly, she's just a kind human being. And I feel like when you watch her videos, you can really feel her heart in them. And that's why I connected with her the most, just because I feel like, yes, her life might look perfect, but I totally feel like on some level I can relate to her, even though my life is like the opposite of perfect. It's just a mess all day long. So if you're looking for someone to watch, check out Tiffany Beeston. I'll have her linked in the description box below. And today we have decided to collab on a, what are we making? A meal prep video. So I'll give you some meal prep ideas. She'll provide you with some meal prep ideas. I'm pretty sure uh, she is gluten free, so she'll have a lot of that kind of inspiration. I feel like she's a little healthier than I am. I like to eat healthy but I also like to eat some sugar, okay? Just to give you a little glimpse into what you have to look forward to today. If you're here from Tiffany's channel, hey, what's up? <laughs> My name is Kimberly Whisk, and you're either going to really enjoy hanging out with me or you won't, so let's find out. <laughs> okay, so today what we're making are some heavenly hunk of chunks. You guys know they're my favorite. I've never tried to create them in my kitchen before, in my test kitchen. So today is that day. And I also found this incredible pin on Pinterest. It was like 40 amazing brunch ideas. I got drugged down that black hole. Black hole, rabbit hole, some kind of hole I got dug into, sucked into, and I wrote down like 70 things to make from that list of 40 ideas. Yes, you have met Einstein. And I'm reading my list and I definitely did not pare that down yet. On today's menu, I have a ch Italian chopped salad. Oh my gosh, if you've been around for a really long time, a couple years ago, I feel like I made this every weekend. It was so delicious. It's a bunch of veggies. Is it a bunch of veggies? It's a bunch of deliciousness is all I'll say. Beef, potato, and egg bake? Yes, please. Heavenly hunk of chunk cookie recipe. Cookie though? I feel like it's like a healthy alternative to a cookie. Pecan coffee cake, definitely not healthy. But I feel like since these are brunch ideas, you can eat them for breakfast, you can eat them for lunch, you can eat them for brunch. And who doesn't love breakfast for dinner, am I right? Also, I feel like pecan coffee cake can be a dessert as well. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I've got you covered. <laughs> and then I'll also have some fruit to cut up, some veggies to roast to have a healthy option during the week. And then, uh, oh, maybe chicken lasagna, but I don't know about that, okay? I don't like to get ahead of myself. I like to keep my expectations low. And if I go above and beyond, we can all give ourselves a round of applause. What are we gonna make first? My boo. You know what? I didn't really wanna start off with the most delicious thing, <laughs> mostly because it's, not very nutritious, but I feel like that's where we have to go. Pecan coffee cake, we cover all of the bases here. You know what's fantastic about this one? It calls for yellow cake mix. And I feel like 
that's gonna save us some time. Bonus, this brand, dairy free. It's most certainly not. You also need some vanilla pudding mix. Put this stuff in anything and it makes it taste a million times better. Oh boy, we gotta go in this cabinet. You guys know I can never find anything in here. We need some vanilla. I have lemon, I have almond, I have peppermint. No big deal. I have two peppermints. Found it. Guess where it was? The last place I looked. I can't ever find anything. I feel like I just organized. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Sugar. Orange juice. Freshly squeezed. Ooh, I'm already tired. Time to hydrate. Grab some water. It purifies the soul. You know, the other day I was at Costco and they had pecans for sale and I said, nah, I got some of those at home. Uh, guess who didn't have any at home? So then I had to run back to Costco. Sale was over. That's what you get for not keeping good inventory. <laughs> for the pecan coffee cake, if you don't like pecans, throw in walnuts. If you don't like walnuts, use almonds. If you don't like nuts, I don't know, just have plain cake. So we need pecans. Instant vanilla pudding, sugar, yellow cake mix, an orange or orange juice, or if you don't have it, just leave it out, who cares? Vanilla extract, confectioner sugar, some sour cream, ooh, sounds fancy, cinnamon, and some eggs. The spices fell on the ground. <laughs> Beat the first six ingredients on low speed. That's what I like to see. I mean, this cake has got to be the most moist cake ever. It has sour cream. No butter though. Interesting. Also no coffee. Additionally interesting. Vanilla pudding mix. That vanilla pudding mix smells so good. You need four eggs. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Wasting my time. We like to do two at a time here. If you can't double crack, you're not a real chef. One more. Oh no! We do need oil. <laughs> One third cup oil. Oh my, this thing is so heavy. It's slippery too. And two teaspoons of good old Homemade vanilla extract. Let's whip it. Oh, when a problem comes along, you must whip it. 30 seconds, and then blast it on high for a couple minutes. Okay, well, if this isn't an accurate representation of my life, I forgot to add in the cake mix. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't seem right. Something must be missing. No big deal. Just add it in. And give it a whip. While that is whipping, we're going to cut up some pecans. The recipe calls for two thirds, uh, but you guys know I don't really follow recipes, so I'm gonna add in, that looks good. Plus a couple for me. Oh my word, pecans just have such a great natural maple-y flavor. Just a rough chop on these. Cool, what's next? To a bowl, add a third cup of sugar, couple teaspoons of cinnamon, Oh my gosh, this is going to be great. I already want to eat it. And I think that's it, just the pecans. Wait, that should, do I need something else? Just mix all of that together and then we're gonna sprinkle it over the cake. So now that the batter actually looks like a batter, I'm going to pour it into a prepared pan. But first, you know we have to take a lick because salmonella, I dare you. Interesting, okay. It's good enough for another try. Just grease a little pan here. I use avocado oil mostly because I'm fancy. And also someone guilted me into buying it. I do like the spray nozzle. Just pour it right in here. Doesn't that just look delicious? You know, my inspiration behind making this was Chrissy Teigen's like oatmeal cake, which was so good. It was like baked oatmeal. I don't know the proper name for it, but I do remember eating it thinking, Oh my, I wanted it every night for dessert. I'm not a big breakfast fan. I'll eat like leftover dinner for breakfast, but Chrissy Teigen's cake, dude, it was like dessert worthy. I ate it just through the day. I left it out all day long and would just nibble on it. It was so delicious. So I feel like this might be something similar, mostly because they both use a cake mix. I don't know, other than that, they're completely different. So apparently you just take this mixture and sprinkle it over the top. I feel like this is like semi-homemade, you know? Do you remember that series with, um, oh, who was it? Sandra Lee? Man, I used to love that show. It's like homemade, but kind of not, but definitely, <laughs> you know what I mean? This is like a lazy way to make a cinnamon, uh, what are those things called? Cinnamon, a cinnamon roll. Yeah, there it is, all right. And then you take a knife, 
Probably better than this. I'm just gonna use this because the tripod is blocking my drawer and I just don't feel like it. And then you make some swirly girls in here and we'll see how this comes out. Maybe some figure eights, you know, crack out your inner artist. Monet, Picasso. All right, I think that's good. Yeah, should we do a little more? An artist's work is never truly complete, is it? Although I feel like that's good enough. Oh crud, was I supposed to bake it? Great, 30 minutes, 411 degrees. Let's do it. One down, 45 to go. Well, I guess since the oven is on, we should probably make the beef, potato, and egg bake. I'm not using beef, but I do have some sausage that I need to use up. It was the main inspiration for this. I was like, what am I gonna make with this? I also have some eggs and potatoes. Uh, except for I didn't have potatoes. And my grocery store was out of hash browns, so I ended up buying the Potatoes O'Brien with onions and peppers, and I feel like the more veggies, the merrier. So I felt like that was a good substitute. The weird thing about this recipe for me is the ricotta cheese. Ricotta, however you want to say it. Potato, potato, a rose by any other name, my friends. You need a cup of ricotta cheese. The funny thing is I'm Italian and my whole family is like rolling right now because I am unable to properly say ricotta. Ricotta. Do you know how much that cactus was, Eleanor? Yeah. 40, 20, 20 dollars it values at. The mommy's the box you get to me. I know, she got it in a fat fit fun box. You have to say, my boo. <laughs> Where were we? Well, full disclosure, I've never had this before, but I do have some spinach that I felt like would be good in this recipe. Onion powder, which I recently tried for the first time. A real banger. It calls for garlic powder, which I don't have, but I do have some garlic, so I'll just crush that up. And I feel like I would normally just cut up an onion as well. Calls for sage, I have Italian seasoning, red pepper flakes, forget about it. Oh, tomatoes. I hate tomatoes, but it looked so pretty in the picture, I thought I need those, okay? It's all about presentation. It also calls for cheese. I'm not gonna do that. Let's bring it to the stove top. This one should be pretty easy to whip together. Throw some sausage. Or uh, this, I guess it's ground beef, but I'm using sausage. And you know what? I am gonna cut up an onion and you can't stop me. Okay, well, another change in events. Since the potatoes already have some onion in it, I just found this really sad looking onion in my fridge and I'm just gonna chop this up. It's half an onion actually. Straight in the pan with the sausage. I also feel like using sausage over ground beef is gonna give us so much more flavor Okay, listen, I know everyone raves about this thing, how it's like so, I mean, I don't like it. It is a bear to clean, and all the meat always gets stuck on the sides. I don't know, I'm the only one. I'm washing my hands. I just use a good old fashioned spoon, because that's the kind of gal I am. You know, maybe we'll add some salt and pepper to this. Why not? Season every layer. Now I'm gonna work on the smallest cloves of garlic I've ever had in my entire life. I don't know about you, but I personally love how the scent of garlic lingers in my uh, fingernails after I've peeled it, just for the rest of the day. That's a joke, by the way. I do feel like if you don't like the texture of onions, you could certainly just add onion powder. I'm just gonna add a little bit, because why not? And Italian seasoning. Oh, but we have that in the sausage, so <laughs> banging on all cylinders here. While this is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, whip up the rest of it. Oh, well, you didn't miss much, but I definitely wasn't recording. I just poured some potatoes in the bottom of a pan, and this cooked really quickly, so I'm just gonna throw some spinach straight in here. The recipe calls for frozen spinach, but I have fresh, and I just feel like, why not, you know? If you really want to chop that up into smaller pieces, you can do that as well. It should take no time at all for these leaves to wilt. Throw a lid on it, and then we'll finish up the eggs. So, 14 eggs go in. Oh my gosh! It's a conspiracy! To the eggs, we're going to add one cup of ricotta cheese. And I bought the big one because I feel like I might want to make a chicken lasagna, so we'll see how I feel. I'll make it eventually. Grab a whisk and just go to town. A third cup of milk.
I'm done. You top the potatoes with the beef mixture and spinach. You know what I forgot? The garlic. <laughs> That's okay, we'll live. I'm just gonna uh, slice up some of these tomatoes to throw on top. The ironic thing about this is I used to have a knife specifically for tomatoes and I don't like tomatoes, so I decluttered it. And since then, I have cut more tomatoes like in the past month than I have in my entire life. But you know those people who are always like, oh, I never regret decluttering anything. I regret things I declutter all the time. But apparently I can live without it because look, this knife is doing just fine. All right, let's finish this thing off and get it into the oven. Throw the egg mixture right on top. Kind of get the egg situated so it's touching everything. We need to tilt a whirl it. Great. Well, you know what? I'm going to get the cheese. Sprinkle it with the cheese of your choice. The recipe calls for Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack, but I have this really great blend from Costco, Mexican style, and that's what we're gonna use because you work with what you have. I don't know, I don't want too much, that's good. And then top it with tomatoes. I'm just gonna do this. Yes, please. You know what I was going to make instead of this? A crustless quiche but I feel like this is pretty similar just with meat. But I think the crustless quiche had meat too. I don't really remember. I just know this looks divine. Are you kidding me? Somebody call the Food Network already. Let's get a little shot of this perfection. Throw it into your oven. We've got it at 411 degrees for about 40 to 45 minutes. And those tomatoes are just gonna burst in the oven. I'm just gonna clean up a little bit. And honestly, I don't know what we're making next. You know what I do know? I have a little piece of brownie left over. Oh no! It's not going to waste, don't worry. It's left over from Brownie Friday. It's usually what I eat for breakfast every Saturday morning. It is smelling like the holidays in my house because of the cinnamon. Oh, I also found recipes for brunch ham enchiladas. They look divine. And then lemon blueberry drop scones drooling but i'm gonna save these for another day so i figured we would work on the chopped italian chopped salad next and this is great it's like a cold pasta salad so it's great to have just in your fridge you know all my kids like to eat this they just grab it right out of the fridge it's great for get-togethers if you're ever doing a get-together or a potluck or anything so you need one cup of diatellini pasta uh, but then i thought oh maybe i'll pay homage to tiffany and get some gluten-free pasta I love the Banza pasta. It's got like added protein and stuff, but my kids aren't huge fans of this, so I aim to please. Plus, if it ain't broke, woo! Don't fix it. I'm just gonna boil this on the stove. Tell me when that boils over, okay? This is almost everything else that you're going to need. So some summer sausage, or you can replace this or just omit it. The recipe calls for tomatoes, which I'm putting in today because I have some left over, but normally I omit those because I don't like them. Oh, it also calls for cheese. I don't know if I normally add that, but I bought it. Some olives, chickpeas, and then artichokes and uh, green onions. And I think that's it. Oh, the dressing is what really makes this delicious. I'm just gonna check on the um, pecan cake. It looks good. Not quite done yet. So, I love having uh, like a salad ready to eat in my fridge for the rest of the week. You go, ah, what is that noise? Hello? Oh, I think it's the end. What on earth? All right, well, there you go. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. We'll just pretend nothing happened, okay? I normally prep salads, and I normally make really delicious salads, but this is just as delicious, and I like to serve it on a bed of romaine. You're actually supposed to mix romaine lettuce into this. Oh gosh, I heard a weird noise, but it's just the water boiling. Okay, hold on. Anyway, I find if you're not eating it all the same day, didn't I just cut this to peel it? If you're not going to eat all of this in the same day, the lettuce is gonna wilt. So I just keep it on the side and I cut it to eat, to order, whatever you wanna say. And I just cut the summer sausages in cubes. Oh my gosh, my oven! No! It's the end. It's the end of the world as we know it. Come on, oven. Come on, you can do it. My oven has been on the fritz 
for a solid year. I just refuse to buy a new one. It doesn't make any sense. It's just what I'm doing, okay? One cup of noodles going in. Okay, I'm adding summer sausage just to a really large bowl. Then I'm going to cut, actually I might have olives in my fridge. Whether or not they're expired is the real question. Ooh, best by June of 2023. Yes, please. I guess I need to try one for good measure, right? Tastes good to me. Who knows how many olives you need. Just put in as many olives as you like. I'm just gonna do the rest of this jar because I want it out of my fridge. Give these a nice chop. You can go in and cut them individually in half or however you wanna cut them. I just, uh, you know. I'm gonna cut up some green onions and you know what's funny is I thought I had a whole thing in my fridge because I saw this. Isn't that hilarious? I'm just gonna use whatever I have left over because I'm definitely not running back to the store for more. Really, you only need a half a cup, so this is perfect. You need one cup marinated artichoke hearts. And for the longest time, I didn't think I liked artichoke hearts. And then I ate one, and I was like, dang, these are great. They're salty, they're kind of weird, but they also add so much flavor to a dish, especially if they're marinated. I'm sure you could use the juice for something if you're domesticated and good with stuff like that, but I am just gonna dump it down the sink. Great, my hands are super oily and I can't open this. Come on, Kim, everybody's watching. Got Ow, oh, God, God. All right, cool, 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 what's next? All right, I'm trying to keep the bowl looking like Pinterest worthy. Can you see in there? Probably not. I'm going to drain one can of chickpeas and if you wanna make this ready to eat, put the can of chickpeas in your fridge so it's nice and cool and ready to go. And you know what, I thought about it. I'm not gonna add the cheese. I don't think I ever do, so whatever. I will cut up the rest of the tomatoes, but in really thick pieces so I can pick them out. <laughs> what is one thing that you food prep all the time? I know um, I watch you know food prep videos, and a lot of people do boiled eggs almost every week. Ugh, tomatoes are so gross. I know my aunt, she meal preps goulash, not every week, but it's like a staple for her and she does it often. So I'm wondering if there's anything on your list that you meal prep all the time. It's just like a given every week. You just do it without even thinking about it. Oh my gosh. It's incredible. Incredible. Rachel Ray, give me a call. Emeril Lagasse, where you at? Bobby Flay, I'm waiting. I don't know any of the other people's names because um, I don't have cable. <laughs> uh, I'm old school. Wolfgang Puck? Hi! I mean, look how incredible that looks. Presentation is everything, okay? We eat with our eyes first. But it won't look like this once it's ready to go, so let's make the dressing. Hold on before we do anything else. Uh, this looks amazing. You gotta come look. You gotta come in closer. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. Are you drooling? Are your salivary glands even working? Cannot wait to crack into this. Oh my gosh, someone get me a cookbook. I'll put in all my favorite recipes that I have not created on my own. <laughs> There's also a glaze we're gonna make for the coffee cake, but let's just make the dressing first. Super simple, one tablespoon Dijon mustard. Oh boy. This is the last of it. Half a cup of red wine vinegar, but I'm just gonna put a splash in there mix it up and try to get the rest of the Dijon out. Oh man, this dressing is so good. Okay, half a cup red wine vinegar. It is a strong flavor. Give it a little sweetness with two tablespoons of honey, one, two. A little bit of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon, a little bit of pepper, half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. It calls for salt and, <gasps> I knew I saved that garlic for something, some minced garlic. Right here. Nothing goes to waste here. And then you give this a nice whisk. Oh, and I drained my pasta over here. It's hot, it's so hot. Uh, you wanna cool it down before you add it to the bowl. I don't like to run my pasta under cold water because it strips it of that starch, you know? But if you're impatient, you could totally do that. I just like to throw it in my fridge. Once it's all nicely mixed, you just pour it all over your salad. It's a lot of dressing. I feel like I used to half this, but you know what, my memory isn't what it used to be. And don't forget, you're about to add pasta in here. Oh, did I just ruin it? 
Ah, well, it's bound to happen. And before you serve it, I always like it on a very large bed of lettuce. So that's where the dressing comes in handy as well. Yeah, doesn't look too pretty anymore, does it, folks? This is real life. Instagram versus reality moment. Actually, that does look pretty. Okay, it does. And I'm going to add the pasta in here and you can see how it just really bulks it up. I would definitely chill this before you serve it. It just tastes so much better. And once those flavors really marinate, they get deeper as well. The flavors get richer and deeper. I don't know, am I even making sense? A bon appetit. Okay, let's move on and make this really simple glaze for the coffee cake. So you need half a cup of sugar. That's more, but you know, more is more. And you can use anything to make this into a little glaze. This recipe calls for two tablespoons of orange juice. I feel like an orange flavor is so fancy. It's so like Claire from Bon Appetit quality. But if you don't have orange juice or you don't wanna use it, you don't like orange flavor, whatever the case may be, you can just use a little bit of milk, a little bit of water, vanilla extract if you have it, any kind of extract you wanna use. This orange, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry for what I've done to you. But I thank you for all that you have done for me. A little juice goes a long way in terms of making a glaze. But in my case, I need a little more. You can kind of see it coming together here. You don't want it too thin, you don't want it too thick. It's easy to fix the consistency if you've gone too far either way. And if you think it's too thick, just keep stirring because you might be wrong. I bet you're never wrong, but in this case you might be. And once it hits the heat from the top of that cake, Oh yeah. You know what would be great? What I feel like Ina Garden would add to this? That uh, taste at home, which is where this recipe came from, didn't? Orange zest. That would really kick this up. Extraterrestrial level, you know? It's gonna take this and just drip. Ooh, wow, well, ribbons. More than a drizzle. This is faux drizzle. Why does Snoop Dogg always have an umbrella on him? Faux drizzle. <laughs> One of Alex's dad jokes. Well, I feel like the picture maybe is not glazed because the picture just looks crazy good and this is the opposite of that. Well, I've ruined it, folks. Nothing new here. Okay, it's gonna taste good, though. Ready to go, me into my life. Okay, let's make some heavenly hunk of chunks. I mean, of course, you have to lick the whisk Oh my word, make that next time you have brunch. Do you guys have brunch with like your mom or do you have friends that you can brunch? I don't, I don't. So I just brunch with myself. I brunch with you. I really just brunch with my kids <laughs> and my husband, but they don't appreciate a good pecan, what is it called? Pecan coffee cake. They just don't get it. All right, what do we need next? Oh yes, the copycat heavenly hunk cookie recipe. I get heavenly hunks from Costco. They also sell amazing flavors at like home goods. They're so expensive. So I figured I could just make them myself. So I printed out the recipe. Do you see this? Do you see this? You can't see it. Why did they make the picture so big? Do they think I wanna waste all of my ink? You know what's funny about this is that there were three, two pages I guess, and I specifically told my printer to only print page two, but it only printed page one. Uh, that's my life, so something must have gone wrong there. So I just wrote down the recipe on the back. Rolled oats, then it calls for corn syrup, which I thought was a little weird. Um, I happen to just have some left over from the holiday baking season. But if you don't have that, you can use agave. Actually, in the directions to this recipe, it calls for agave, but in the ingredient list, it calls for corn syrup. I'm sure you can use honey or any kind of sweetener that you like. I need brown sugar. The one I need is always in the back. Oh, crap! I just wanted the sugar to melt a little bit. Ah, uh, it didn't melt a little bit. This looks really good too. I'm gonna take that out. Woo, you gotta see it. You see that? I don't know, did I ruin it, guys? Would you still come over for brunch? Should I be a little embarrassed of the state of my coffee cake? Actually, it looks really good, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, that looks professional, okay? What about this over here? My gosh, a feast at Kimberly Whisk's house. You know what, I don't like tomatoes, but this just would not look the same without it, am I right? Absolutely incredible. I can't wait to dive into that once it's not piping hot. Okay, this recipe also calls for mini chocolate chips. 
I use the Enjoy Life brand sometimes. These are dairy free. I mean, we're definitely not dairy free. I just use ricotta cheese and cheese, whatever. But you know, you make your selections. But this Enjoy Life brand, it's like free of a lot of allergens, like the top allergens anyway. Wheat, peanut, tree nuts, dairy, casein, soy, egg, sesame, sulfite, lupin, mustard, that's a main allergy, little did I know, fish, shellfish, and crustaceans. It's free of all those. It is a little more expensive, but if you're, the, anyway, these are the best dairy-free chocolate chip I've ever had. But I haven't had lilies, and I hear that's great too. Okay, I need tapioca flour. Dang it. I thought I had some. Aw, oh, man. Oh, ooh, what is, what is that up there? I know I got something fancy. I know I have fancy stuff up here, okay? It is arrowroot powder. Okay, can I use arrowroot powder in place of tapioca flour? Summary arrowroot is a great gluten-free replacement for tapioca flour and may be swapped in a one-to-one -one ratio in most recipes. Yes, yes, Nevertheless, yes, it doesn't work yes. well as a standalone flour in baked goods. Yes. We did it, you guys. It's a good substitute. I have arrowroot powder. This stuff is expensive. Arrowroot, tapioca, any kind of specialty powder or flour. I say if you don't have it, you don't need it. Coconut flakes. The coconut flakes are buried. I need to declutter my spice cabinet, but I just don't want to. We need coconut oil, which I do have. I thought I had more. You need half a cup. I definitely don't have that. We'll work with what we have, okay? Oh, I want to stay true to the recipe, but it asks, it's asking me to bring out my food processor, and I just don't remember where I put it. <laughs> Found it. it! wasn't as bad as I thought. This recipe says to grind... Oh, where's the blade? <laughs> oh, great. So you grind up a third cup of oats. What is that going to do? Where's the top? Got it. <laughs> The pictures that she has for this recipe look so good, so I just want to stay true to it and hopefully they taste just as good as the real heavenly hunk. You guys know I make energy balls all the time and this is kind of similar, that recipe, except for it doesn't call for corn syrup. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. Oh, also that was two cups of oatmeal added into the one third. A little bit of salt to enhance the flavor. One third cup tapioca powder or arrowroot powder is what I'm using or flour, whatever it's called. You know, I bought that to make like fancy pecan pie, keto pecan pie. I never did. I decided regular pecan pie was better. Half a cup of coconut flakes. That doesn't seem like enough. Give this a whirl. You're actually just supposed to mix that by hand, but I'm too lazy. That's good enough. I just threw this in the microwave, and you know what? I might have half a cup in here. You're supposed to melt the coconut oil. No, that's more like a quarter cup. I'm just gonna use normal oil, and then half a cup of corn syrup. And you mix this in. Wish me luck. And then you add half a cup of chocolate chips. Oh my gosh, am I supposed to bake this? Seems really weird. I'm gonna give it a try. It's heavy on the coconut. Well, the thing is, I didn't write down all of the directions, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to be right back. I just got off that lady's vlog post, and can I just tell you, the pictures she has of this stuff are amazing. If mine look half that good, I'll be happy. I don't even care about what they taste like at this point. I just want them to look as good as hers. But she throws hers in a loaf pan and puts it in the freezer and then cuts them. Oh wait, I do have parchment paper. Brand new, I've never used it. I've been waiting for this special occasion. And I really think you just line it so you can easily take it out and cut it. I typically don't do this. I think I need another taste test. These taste really good. I do feel like they're very similar to the Heavenly Hunk. And these would be really versatile too if you wanted to add any kind of flavors that you want. So they have like white chocolate chip and cranberry, which is my absolute favorite. They also have a birthday cake. I don't know what they add. You'd have to look at the ingredient list. That one is very coconut heavy. They have peanut butter. So all kinds of stuff. You can get inspiration off of the different flavors that they have. All right, there it is. Cool, cool, cool. One more thing to wash. I'm glad I finally made these. Can I tell you? Because I am a huge fan of Heavenly Hunks. Okay, cool. I'm just tidying up a little bit. You tidy as you go so that you're not, you don't have a massive mess by the end. Just a, just a huge mess. Into the 
freezer. My freezer is full. Well, now, where's my water? I need a little empanada break. I don't know where these came from, but they, <laughs> they're delicious. You know, I had big, big plans. I took some chicken out. I might throw some, you know what? That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do, cool. I'm gonna throw some really easy chicken into the oven, just cook it, just to have it on hand for lunches and milk, put it in little containers. Just with some broccoli. I just like something quick, easy, healthy, something I don't have to think about for lunch. Let me grab the broccoli. Or this could even be dinner for one night. Wait, why do we make a cake? Coffee cakes are acceptable to eat for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or midday snack if you're having coffee, or water. I am going to throw the broccoli just straight onto, am I gonna ooh, make all of this? I haven't decided yet. I feel like half is enough. Ooh, not half, more than half. So My assistant is going to put salt and pepper on him. A liberal amount, that means a lot of. Okay, salt, pepper, oil, you just give the broccoli a nice little massage and then throw it into your oven 411 degrees for about, I don't know, I'd say 15 to 20 minutes. Broccoli cooks pretty fast. And then the chicken, I just add a little bit of oil to it and I'm keeping it super simple, mostly because I just don't feel like doing much to it. Salt and pepper, it's unheard of, I know, but it tastes delicious. I use chicken thighs, it's very hard to overcook chicken thighs. They stay nice and juicy. And here's the kicker, I love lemon juice on my broccoli. I also love lemon juice on my chicken. And when the broccoli comes out, I can just douse it in lemon juice too. It's one of my favorite flavors. It doesn't add many calories, but it adds just a nice freshness. I tidy up a little again, and then I'm just gonna cut up some fruits. Okay, I have a pineapple to cut up, I think. I have a watermelon, I have a cantaloupe, where's my knife? So just, let's get it started, okay? Let's get it started. Oh, did I pick a good one this time? Captured in a photograph, remember how he used to sit in the vines, yeah, oh, and I can hear you laugh it off, you always said mistakes I left in the past.
One thing I wanted to do this week in food prep, but I didn't get around to, mostly because I wanted to order something special for it, but then in my mind I was like, do you really need it? Anyway, I wanted to make like parfaits, ready to eat. It's a container that I saw that holds the yogurt, and then this special lid that has like two little compartments. I thought it was so cool. So I have yet to wash my blueberries. I should probably just wash them and put them in a container. Maybe I'll do that in a minute. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with what we have meal prepped here and then the stuff in my oven, which I guess I should bring out. I stinking love crispy broccoli. It is so delicious. I'm about to devour half of this. Thank you, oven, for another day. I said it once, I'll say it 700 more times. I love having cooked veggies on hand. It just encourages me to eat something healthy, you know? I'm trying to show this to you without, you know, it's just... This is as good as it's gonna get right now. It's so simple, but so good. I personally think every single vegetable tastes delicious when you roast it in the oven. And that's all it takes. I just grabbed a gargantuan piece of coffee cake out. I'm just gonna bite into it like a barbarian. I don't have a plate. Oh my gosh. Should I have made something healthy? Probably. Maybe next week I will. Last week I probably did. We all deserve a treat every now and then. A bon appetit. A okay, moment of truth if we can make these heavenly hunks look just as good as that lady on the, her blog. So far so good. She did a little of this action. Here we go. How about it? I will say they are extremely sticky. I don't know if it's just because they need more time in the freezer or what, but they do taste good and they do look pretty. Maybe you just want to spend 10 bucks on a bag at Costco though. I don't know. It's up to you. All right, let's tear into this next. This might be the best breakfast casserole I've ever made. I don't, maybe it's that ricotta cheese doing its magic. I would definitely like to throw a lot more veggies into here. Maybe mushrooms, maybe broccoli, maybe zucchini. Mmm, red pepper, red bell pepper would be amazing. Yeah, this is a good one. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. I hope I gave you some meal inspiration ideas or recipes. Oh my gosh, I guess I need to dig into these and let you know how they taste. I bet you they're supreme. Don't forget to check out Tiffany Beeston's channel. She's incredible, you're gonna love her. Her link is down below. You're gonna love her, you're definitely going to enjoy her videos and I bet she has some great recipes to share with you too. If you want to, subscribe. Put a little happy in your day and I will see you next time. Bye. My boo. That one person that will always have your heart. It's the only way we know how to run. Good old Usher, okay.